Hello and welcome to this Project in a Box video. This is session number nine in the Planner Masterclass series and here we're going to be looking at risk and issue responses. So let's go and have a look at that. So here I am in Planner. Um, I'm in the risk tab. We'll look at that first and we can see our risk list showing here. Now we can also switch our view on optionally to show what we call responses below. Um, now people you know when they start getting into risk management will record a risk they'll say well this might happen possibly to our project and that's great that's a really good start identifying that something might happen but the best thing you can do is to address it people that have started off with excel spreadsheets they will often have a column in their spreadsheet which says what are we going to do about the risk or responses or something like that and that's a place where they can type everything and keep updating information about what's happening with that particular risk but actually and when we have the same sort of thing actually in here as well so if i double click into one of my risks you see we've got a commentary field here and we can type in whatever we want to into here we can copy and paste material etc as big a space as we want to write as much as we want to about that risk and how it's progressing and what we're doing about it and that's the sort of the first step in maturity that people will take when they're responding to their risks telling you what they're doing to address it in a in a sort of um a commentary type way and so that's good and we can see some of those risks here have got commentaries <coughs> against them um but if you want to be a bit more sophisticated and some of these risks here that are now closed actually have had responses showing against them and in fact risks can have one or multiple responses showing against them i'm sure we've got some in here here's one with two different responses against it because you may find that um, when you've got a risk you can do something to avoid the risk or you can do something to mitigate the effects of the risk if that happens and actually by doing both of those things you can be you know significantly improving the position uh, for the risk and that it might be less likely to happen but even if it still does happen you're going to do We've got something you can do about it so <clears throat> for many complicated risks there's going to be a number of different responses you can put in place and this allows you to manage that in a more sophisticated way you can see what those responses are and as you can see here we can identify those we can also sometimes see all the responses showing down here as well and that allows us to see things like due dates etc so to edit the response we start with the risk itself <clears throat> So come to this risk, we can see this one has a comment as well as a response. But when I come to the responses tab, I can see I've got two responses for this risk. And as I open each one up, I see a set of information for them. So we've got different types of response. Um, these are fairly common ones. You can add your own ones in if you want to. There's a, a place where we can change the pick list. You can see that as part of the customizing planner um, video. Uh, and so you can populate that pick list with the what the type of response is a description of what that response involves who's owning it and who's doing it and again just like before this is going to give us the names from our resource list it's a shared resource list across the plans resourcing area risks and issues um, and the same for action e and then we've got status again you can customize the status list if you want these are currently quite simple the response is either open or it's closed um, and we can identify if we want, uh, well, we pick up the date allocated, we can put in a, a due date if we want to, um, to say when it should be completed by, and then that allows us to order those down here if we need to do that. And then we've got a commentary here for the response. So we have, we still have a commentary type approach to this, but it's one response at a time, which makes that much easier to granulize and grab hold of the actual things that are happening against your particular risk. So if I were to add a new one to here, obviously get my new form coming up, um, and I can say this is what we will do. Um, and I can identify the owner, so that's going to be me, and I'm going to get somebody else to work on it. It's going to be Neil, and it's going to stay open. Um, I can give it a due date, like I say, if we want to do that. Um, or I can just set it like that and start working on it. Now, the other advantage of these is that when I, if I'm using the, the multi-user platform and I check this plan back in, um, it hooks this risk and that response now to user Neil in the system. So it'll appear on, appear on Neil's list and he might get notification emails about it 
depending on the rules that are set up for notification emails. So it's immediately grabbing people and putting them in touch with the things they need to be working on. If you're just using it in the free mode and it's just a standalone planner file, you're still getting better information because now that's going to be showing up in your list here and you'll be able to so for example I mentioned choosing to see all of them at once if I come and edit this view you see one of my options here is show all responses and therefore we can see all the responses that are due for this particular register and as I click into particular things I can come down here and find the response and it'll show me the risk that's associated with it like that so it works in both ways and I say I can then order these columns if I want to and go and find the particular things of interest to me and um, so that's um, how we add responses and the sort of information that we've got about those responses A fairly simple sort of thing but it just helps that granularity of you know we've, we're working on maturing our understanding of how risk management works and so we're doing things like breaking down um, the risk description to cause event and effect, breaking down the responses into particular responses rather than a generic category. So that's really useful. Um, and then if we come down and take our risk and it would be migrated into an issue, for example, which is something, of course, you can do here. So if I do copy risk to new issue because there now has been a lack of resource so I can come through to here and I can then change that one um, and if I open it up you'll see it's brought the responses with it as part of that they might be the actions of things you were setting up to deal with well now the things actually happened and therefore um, some of those are going to come into play and if if they haven't <laughs> if they're not relevant, then you know it's become an issue. It's good to understand what you tried to do to stop it becoming an issue. Might help you in addressing the issue. And we can see those responses here. It also brings the commentary, and it brings other aspects of it as well that it can, like the date it was created and <clears throat> the owner and other such things. Some things, of course, you're going to have to populate further, but you've got the core things brought through for you. So that's you know a really useful um, thing. You're not losing any of that information by putting it in at risk level. Of course, if you've got a new issue that you're adding, so if we come and add ourselves a new issue directly, and obviously we'd fill that information and we've got the same thing here with responses and it's exactly the same response form so that we can move that content from risk to issues nice and easily. So that is responses, just a, a quick introduction so you can see how they work, how that you can have multiples of them, and to understand that you can feed that information back into the main system and how that's hooked up to users. Um, good, I hope you found that useful. Um, and if you found this one useful, go back and look at some of the other sessions in the Planner Masterclass series. Thank you very much.